Hey guys, today I want to talk about consent in role-playing game. And the topic came back on the table a bit because of some asshole on Twitter, like talking about GM killing character and saying that it would only that it should only be done with the consent of the player. And I could talk more about that in RPG, and maybe one day I will. But for now, I want to talk about consent. And this should be a short video. I don't have that much to say about the topic, but I'll say that. By sitting at my table, you consent to whatever will happen in the game I run. It doesn't mean that I, you consent to me abusing you as a player, as a person. You consent to that by dressing provocatively or being weaker than me. But what happened in the game, if you don't like it, don't show up. Or you know, you can talk to me. People talk about creating a safe space in our games. And listen, this is a game. None of it is real. This is a safe space by definition. Even a safe space to explore the shit that makes you uncomfortable. And if you're not able to make the difference between a game and reality, RPG might not just be for you. RPG is not for everyone, I'm sorry to say. If you don't have an imagination, if you're incapable of letting go of your inhibition, if you lack the most basic social skill, or if you cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality, you don't have what it takes. You should find another hobby or work on yourself to develop those skills. It can be done if you stop being a self-centered prick. Substantive prick. RPG have been around for around 50 years now, and they've been played for decades without any real issue. Yeah, we hear those like horror story, but those are rare exception, and I suspect that most of them are just plain made up. When we talk amongst uh, amongst ourselves, like veteran player, about those story, we rarely, if ever, experience any of them ourselves. And maybe it's because of the circle I evolved in. I don't associate with a male feminist, so that could reduce the incidence of creepiness by a lot. But yeah, every time I see those story, I'm quite skeptical. And now there's this new crowd coming in, and they demand that we change the way we do things. I don't think so. The problem seems to be with you, so maybe you should be the one that change. And it's not to say that we are always like, my way or the highway. We're human beings as well. We're capable of understanding. But don't come up like with those uh, fucking forms that you demand that everybody sign. Talk to us like normal people. You know, you take a guy like uh, Max Liao from Legion of Myth, and he got this uh, misophonia, misophonia issue. And he talk about it openly, so I'm not outing any secret here. But if we're local, and we were to set up a game, and we won't want him in... It probably tell us like, listen, I got this issue where I cannot hear people eat, so I won't be able to join if your groups plan on eating at the table. And if he's a buddy and I want him in, I would go, all right, I'll talk to the guys. We'll see to make some kind of like dedicated snack breaks. Try to accommodate him. Of course, he was coming like an entitled prick, demanding that we accommodate him, like we have a duty to bend over backward for him. We would say, fuck off, get lost. You know, skateboarders have this, uh, used to have this expression for when a bunch of girls would start hanging out at the skate park. They would say that they would mum up the place. And because it used to be a bunch of guys hanging out, maybe with the occasional chicks that was there, that was like one of the guy. And there was like some kind of a hierarchy that was established. And everyone could get their turn and do their trick, but nothing was formalized. It was just like the feel, just the feel that get, we get, you know, kind of vibe. A non-spoken understanding of how things go. But then a bunch of girls would uh, decide to join and start hanging out at the skate park. And they wanted to organize everything. Make sure that everybody's included. That everybody can have access, equal access to the ramp and to do their trick and stuff like that. And that's what they say, they mom up the place. And this phenomenon didn't only exist in the skateboarding community. When I was a boy, we had a lot of uh, free play we would just like get together outside without any supervision and we would play together. And that was even what was happening in recess at school. There was some supervision to make sure that we didn't fight too much, but the teacher didn't really get involved in the activity we engage in or even who we'd engage in. So if you had no social skill, you'd better learn or you'd be left out. But at some point, that's to change. And now everybody had to be included. And we had to be nice to everybody and treat everybody equally. But that's not how reality works. We judge people based on their behavior. And 
there are people we like and there are people we dislike. And if you're being a jerk, you should be excluded. There should be some form of a penalty for expressing antisocial behavior. But no, now everything has to be organized play and we make sure that everybody has their time in the spotlight and the whole thing is madness. And it clearly doesn't create well-adapted adults. Society has been mummed up. And it is what we see in the hobby as well. When they come up with those uh, constant form and those X card, it really gives like a kindergarten vibe. And no, I won't have it. And I'm not saying that this is only due to women joining the hobby. There was always some women. And a lot of those initiatives actually come from men, like very feminized men, but men nonetheless. Anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about uh, today. I'm tired of this constant shit. We don't need that. Just learn to read the room. And if you're not happy with how things are going, stand up for yourself or leave. But stop demanding that the whole world revolves around you. You know, this uh, narcissism is absolutely toxic for yourself. The more you feel like the world revolves around you, the more miserable you'll be. Because now every little injustice you endure is a personal affront. It came from a conspiracy of the whole world to ruin your day. If you learn to let it go, if you accept that you're not that you that you're not the center of the world, that you're like insignificant in the grand scheme of things, and that the world doesn't care about you or about your feeling, rightfully so, it shouldn't care, you'd be much happier in life. Alright. Thank you for watching. Have a good day and take care.